Hey, Lucy, how are you? Oh, how love seeing you. Oh, my God, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. Stop it, stop it. Thank you. I'm so excited. So oh. Excited. Well, thank you very much for being here. Um, and uh, this was a very random thing yes. that popped into my head yesterday. So I was out walking my dogs um, and literally it came in my head, unhealed trauma. We need to speak about this and no better person than yourself who does this day in, day out and really helps smash stories, smash beliefs and just massively help. So first off thank you like this is just oh, amazing thank you oh thank you because you I mean you know a lot about it as well so and your trauma is a big uh, like a love of yours too isn't it it is massively and obviously you know um, my journey is very public on my own personal page I know you've spoken about yours but I just thought it'd be fantastic to have a coffee like you said with Kel okay um <laughs> <Yeah. and> just <laughs> kind of speak a bit about your story where you've come from and also um, a bit about myself for those of you, you know, on your page that don't, um, you know, necessarily know about my journey. Um, so <clears throat> kind of like to me, when I think of unhealed trauma, what words come to your mind that really stick for you when I say those words to you? Well, we was just saying, weren't we? Well, um, unhealed trauma, you think, well, it's like projection onto other people. Um, and when we've, when we've not dealt with our own stuff, we just plant it in someone else's uh is them they're doing it to me and we become a very much a victim in our own life the, the less it's uh it's it just creates such a problem in relationships with everybody um and then we then feel very very miserable and sad and wonder why everyone's mean to us and it gets it gets yeah. a lonely old place yeah it does become a very very lonely old place unfortunately um and i've been there um and i know that you've personally been there okay um, and I just thought um, it might be really nice if you kind of, you know, share a bit about your back history, you know, kind of like where you've come from and like what not dealing with your CRAP, if I can be really honest, um, <laughs> yeah. what it what it did to you, you know, and um, yeah, just if you want to tell us a little bit about it, that'd be really super awesome. Yeah, super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do it? Sorry. Uh, right, well, I, I've got quite, quite an interesting past, but I won't go into it a lot but um yeah my um I was quite ill as a kid uh spent quite in mental health institutes so I'm quite proud of the fact that I got a certificate of sanity which not many people have um eventually eventually took a few sections but after that so a lot of people don't know a huge amount about that side of me which was I was a really sick kid um and ins and outs of that but I suppose um yeah the the trauma that was um more relevant to what I deal with now is within, within relationships um, um, and not dealing with all the reasons I got sick as a kid anyway, you know, got, got anorexic and um, ended up with psychosis issues because of abuse and things like that. So not actually thinking I dealt with it because I talked about it to death, um, but realizing I hadn't actually dealt with it, I hadn't dealt with the what those events had caused in my brain. And um, so I was going into very, very controlling relationships and then assuming I dealt with them, but going into another relationship that was very controlling in a different way. And so not dealing with them just means you have to keep dealing with them. So by not resolving it, by not actually facing things and understanding why you're doing a certain thing and why you're attracting these people into your life means that you're just going to keep doing it. And that's, that's, that's the downfall is that you, until you learn, until you take responsibility for it, which is really hard when you think, well, you're being mean to me. How can I control what that person does to me? You think, well, because you're here in it, receiving it, it's yours. So that's the hardest thing. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. That they Yeah, no, uh, um, taking accountability, I think, and I think I'm sure you'd agree, is mm -hmm. one of the hardest things because I watched a podcast last week and this really hit home, okay? Um, I follow a guy called Brian Scott on the Reality of Revolution. Um, and he said, at some point, you have to sit there and say, everything is your fault. Everything. Because ultimately, whatever is happening in your life is because it's a result of your thoughts and your feelings and your actions. Yeah, I, I would have to say, though, I have a big problem with the word fault. OK, all right, cool. That's fine. I think responsibility, because okay. fault, fault would then be a judgment, wouldn't it? If it's a fault, it's a judgment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I don't know. Like, I just, I personally, I think the minute you I, I think, 
I think if I'm fair, that was kind of like in terms of how the podcast was going because he was laughing about it. Okay. Um, and it's like my video that I put out about soul contracts. I think that was Friday. Yeah, okay. Good. All right. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it was. And at the end of the day, ultimately, you signed up to come down here for this most incredible and amazing in a healing journey yeah and what I put out that was channeled to me was it will take as long as it takes but ultimately it's you that has to come down here and say yes I'm going to deal with my stuff um so for me um mine started back in 2016 when did you really start understanding and learning about the relationships the control when did you see it what was your epiphany Lucy if you don't mind sharing with us the epiphany was, well, there was a moment in time. Can I, yeah, can I just say, on soul contracts, I was having a conversation with my friend walking around the woods and she went, I was talking to her about it as well. Weirdly, you obviously, you are probably doing it. It was on Thursday. So you were probably thinking about it at the same time I was, which is a whole nother story, Kelbo, but Kel. Um, that's fine, but, no, call me Kelbo. <laughs> that's fine. It's just, that's, our, that's your little nickname for me, Kelbo. I love it. But I was like, yeah, we've come hand down. Niche. And one of my friends said, did you ever think that maybe you could have shared the load, Luce? <laughs> what made you think that you could should do all of that in one lifetime? I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It took 40 years to get here. No, and it's, it's like I said in my video, um, I said, like, at some point, you'd like to think someone would stop you and go, hey, Cal, <laughs> do you not think, Chuck, that's a little bit too much to give yourself? And you went nah Harold it's okay I'll do it all you want it I don't mind mate I don't mind being so ill I end up in bed I'll get it yeah do you know yeah. what I mean totally yeah no it's just when you said that in your when you said that in your um your videos like, oh my god I was literally just having that chat the day before like yeah. I think maybe <laughs> have a word someone could point to one side and when you said that I was like oh that's so hilarious anyway yeah. when did I realize it um I really because I, I thought I was all, all healed and all better and everything was, was peachy as a wonderful marriage um gorgeous marriage really healthy finding my purpose it was all delightful but I really wasn't I wasn't happy I was in pain I didn't know what I was doing my marriage was fine as long as I was a good girl and I did what I was told and I was um compliant and then it was perfect um and I I was in pain and I was hurting um I just had shoulder surgery because my shoulder had gone again um it, it popped out and I had to have, have it all and that was very painful was a lot of drugs for that my but pain you had was physical pain is that what you're saying huge amount of physical pain yeah yeah because as, as as you know cal when you don't listen and when when you start breaking as in your the weight of all this stored trauma your body starts reacting badly yeah. so um yeah you could say i had a, a climbing wall accident <laughs> but you know i st my shoulder still went um and as you know and then my uh, my appendix went and if initially uh, when it, when you get an infection like that, your body is literally hurting itself. It's like stabbing itself. It, there's no need for an appendix to get. There is no need. Appendixes yeah. go because you are literally poisoning yourself. There's no other way. It's it's quite terrible to get into that into that moment. Yeah, um, I had that. I had sepsis. <laughs> I mean, my body was full. I was um, I was I became allergic to pretty much all foods except for cucumber um and I, I wasn't losing weight I was still holding on to weight so I'm hang on I'm allergic to all this food I couldn't eat dairy I, I couldn't eat I mean literally my body was was attacking me it, it wasn't coping wow. and I rang, yeah and I rang my mom who got me into Reiki at the time who got me into Reiki when I was 11 and she helped me on my path and and I said they won't give me and my pet my shoulder my shoulder was in agony I was sat there in the car I was about, I'd just been sick because I'd eaten something that had touched butter you know it was like literally I was like <laughs> yeah um, I don't know what to do I'm miserable they won't give me surgery I'm in pain I can't eat I'm so miserable I don't even know what I'm supposed to do anymore and she went and I said what do I do she went well that and she channels stuff my mum she used to anyway she's a bit she's, she's on a different journey now but she used to channel stuff and she'd say just sort it out Lou. sort your shit out will you like when you phone your mum for some nurturing advice you don't yeah. expect her to say just do it just sort it and I was like what do you mean what you're looking at you're asking everyone else 
Why have you not asked yourself? I was like, well, that's fucking helpful, Mum. Cheers. Pop the phone down as you do. And uh, I was like, shit, I, I, this is it. I've all, I'm all I've got here. This is it. No one is here to save me. And that was a big story of mine. As a, I thought that's why I married a, a narcissist and stuff like that, because he saved me in this lovely way. And not, but, you know, and uh, I was like, shit, no one is going to save me. This is it. Mm-hmm. And that's when I really started. So I not only... I, I then went on a massive deep dive, um, which ultimately broke my family apart and sent me, it sent me right down in order to come up. It got rid of the final amounts and I literally ripped apart my, my beliefs. I went right back in. I went right back into all the things that were stopping me and all the fears and all the sabotages. And I, I literally went on about two years of just... Um, did you get any help and support along the way yeah loads like a load yeah absolutely and I went and and whilst I was doing that I was training to in EFT and matrix re-imprinting and I was training in that and by training in that I was getting huge amounts of help so I I went and trained in it because I wanted to know more about it because it's what was helping me Mm -hmm. and then I realized that I could do this for other people and how powerful is that so that's my little journey wow that's pretty incredible. So you're saying by not dealing with all your stuff, it made you physically ill like it did me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I ended up in bed um, for a little bit uh, for a few months just because I wasn't dealing with my stuff. Um, and just on the weight side of it, um, I, I literally held on to my weight for years and years and years. Um, Mm -hmm. and I was a former client of yours as well Um, and you've massively helped me break down some stories um, and some beliefs that um, I've held with inside of myself and I know that personally I'm I'm happy to share this we did a session about six weeks ago was it something like that Um, Mm -hmm. and we kind of looked around anger um, and it's since then that I've dropped a huge amount of weight um, and it's just fallen away from me so I think if anyone is sat here watching this video and going Okay, so unhealed trauma causes me pain, which can ultimately lead to your weight gaining, holding on to weight. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if any of you out there are really trying to, you know, um, sort yourselves out and you're still holding on to weight, do you th- would you agree it's possible that you're holding on to a story or a belief yeah. around that maybe? I haven't met anybody and I, um, I used to do a lot with people with weight, with weight issues and things and struggling with their weight and it is always held on to and it's always a protection it's very rarely not a a form of protection um and a form of not being seen a fear of being seen things like that because if you know if you're holding on to weight people don't see you do they they don't they're not attracted to you and yeah yeah. Mm. I can see that and uh, and I know um I just as you say that you know holding on to weight I know one of the key words for me was being safe Yeah. yeah So I remember, you know, stuff happened to me as a kid. If I was a big, if I was big and I got hit or I got punched, it didn't hurt as bad. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I was always fearing that because I wasn't dealing with my stuff or whatever. So I kept myself big mm-hmm. just in case someone would lash out or someone would hurt me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's massive. Yeah. Um, and then kind of like, I guess, sort of around unhealed trauma really is is looking at those stories and those patterns mm-hmm. and... Yeah you know I don't know I mean one of the things that I've always thought is you know we bring stuff through from other lifetimes um you know and I know that um I did a a group past life thing with you around bread Um, yeah bread I remember that now yeah um and I didn't know this and you told me this bread is bloating Mm -hmm. um and I think you took me back to being I can't remember what year it was but I know I was in a middle eastern country I was a young lad um and since we've done that bit of work um around a past life regression I know now I can eat bread yeah and I'm yeah. not bloated and I don't feel yeah. um poorly or ill yeah um which yeah, is past, amazing yeah. past life stories are amazing because they always show up here like I've, I've shared past life stories with you stuff that I've like I was scared of my little my kids dying and hurting and losing them and it's because uh because they did when I was an Egyptian queen so uh there we go these things happen Egyptian queen I mean that's a story for another video isn't it Tina? that's a whole other yeah like a past life regression we could share we could share all day all the places all the people I've been and stuff but yeah it does it does 
it, it is one thing you have to be careful is not always to go past life because there is this life too this life this life and um, we'd also create stuff in this life we bring stuff through there absolutely and you know and not okay. just from our life though from our ancestors and from our lines of you know we, we take yeah, on because one of the um one of the things that um people have often said to me you know and, and i always i do truly believe this okay is is ancestral healing okay so just because and this might help a lot of you watching okay just because your parents have always done things a certain way please 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 don't think that you have to do it that way would i'm sure you would agree yeah, um i come from a background of um let's not talk about it cal my mother will always always used to say to me let's not talk about it or let's look at that after christmas okay i have had so many many people reach out to me and say i'd love to do inner child healing with you cal but i'd like to do that after christmas Everything. okay so you don't really want to do it but you're saying i'd like to do it in the future therefore it's not important to you and i had someone reach out and say hi cal are these your bank details and that's as far as the conversation has gone OK, so it's in their head, but they're not committed to it. And my reply back was, well, if you want to do it, let's do it today. Let's do it now, because mm. if it's that important to you, let's do that. And I guess one of the things for me is I know I put things off for so many years in dealing with my unhealed trauma from my past as a child. Um, I know it's taken. It's like it's almost like if you're not dealing with what's there now, do you think more and more can get added in the current way the world is? But that's that's a thing, especially with now. I mean, you know, we all know what's you know, the, the way the world is going and the way that people are ascending through, you know, their their stuff. I mean, you can't help but add more on. I mean, it's like you know why you need to actually keep things moving. Why actually still need to keep that? Why I always keep keep tapping and keep doing things to relieve the trauma is because it just adds on, doesn't it? And to, oh my god, like the ascension's nuts at the moment. It's like a juggernaut of like everyone spiritually ascending. It's like it's insane. Everyone's like talking. I, I have a quantum conversation every day now. I mean, that's never happened before. Yeah, you know, talk about quantum mechanics, and it's just part of conversation now, which is never, you know, the, the divide between people who are wanting that ascension and people who aren't. I mean, that's huge now, and it's not um not a mean divide. It's just you can see it more now. No, but it? I'm um I've got to say um, and I've mentioned to you this in the past actually in one of our chats. Okay, but it's been um there's a massive divide in the spiritual community. Okay, mm -hmm. and people who are consciously aware um they may or may not um be very very conscious. Okay, but I think there's now really a time where either you're here to do your work and you're here to sort your stuff out, or literally hang up your jacket, give it to Harold, and just say I'll do it next lifetime yeah but okay. I, I, and like you can see people who've hung up their jacket and that's okay that's a journey but they've done their bit yeah um, but so and what i want to say on that for anyone watching okay is that's not harsh that's your soul contract yeah absolutely okay. yeah yeah all right because one of the things that i've learned is and you taught me this okay is that's okay yeah. accept everybody for where they are on the journey because the and this go back to a projection what you started with okay the more that you spot it in somebody else actually what you're seeing in somebody else is being mirrored back to you um yeah. and i've got a classic example of a relationship i was in okay where that person projected everything of all their issues onto me I was controlling, I was this, I was that, I was that. Um, I, I hadn't done as much inner child work as that person. Okay, that's just projection. Yeah. And some people are here to really clear their stuff. Yeah. And some people aren't. And that's all right. But ultimately, for you guys watching, your time is now. This yeah. is your now moment. And I guess really you know we're here making this to help and say we've both healed yeah. timelines past yeah. present current yeah. quantum yeah yeah and um, look at where you are amazing beautiful soul yeah, oh, let's check you out but do you know what came to you when you were saying why are people giving you bank details and booking in and because people think it's going to be painful and long <laughs> and hard and that's People think, oh, I just can't face it because a lot of people have done talky therapies. I've done it and it's horrible. And actually you think you're healing and you're just numbing. 
Yeah. And then, and then, you know, then somebody triggers you and they, oh my God, it opens up an old wound. And that's, that's not healing. That isn't healing. That's not, that's not kind of the current way that healing happens is not talking about it and, and regurgitating it and hurting anymore. That's not how we do it anymore. Is it? No, it's, um, I've got to say, um, I did that course with you, didn't I? Okay. I did your life by design course. Okay. Yes. Um, and I went and I completely changed in front of everyone's eyes within six weeks. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but it was my time. Yeah. So yeah. I totally believe that you were meant to go in my path. I had a QHHT session just before you showed up. I had a QHHT session two days before you popped yeah. into my life. Um, <laughs> and my higher self said they were sending me someone and there you were. Remember I said to you in a message, here yeah. you are. Well, you got to tell me, okay? Yes. That's a story in itself, okay? <laughs> right? But we'll leave yeah. that for another day why I blocked you and didn't want anything to do with you, okay? Um, but it's, it's when you say stuff like, you know, um, triggering, I've always seen triggering as a gift from other people. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, like I know I triggered the hell out of somebody, a couple of people on that Soul Contracts video, and they've left my page. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I just hope that they now take that on board and say, mm, I don't like that. I'm going to run away from that. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, you're not here to make it, make it easy all the time. You're not here to make it or you actually, we're here to ask the hard questions and not everyone's going to, but they're not, they're only hard if that's how you want to see them. They are all their yes. real opportunities. They are real, yeah. you know, that is that, that I can understand. It's like when I say, listen, you know, you might, when, so, when, the, when I first got told I was in this abusive relationship, why is he so mean to me? Why? And someone said, well, that's all yours. That's all your, you know, your, mm -hmm. it's your choice. Oh, what? I mean, mm -hmm. how can I choose that? It's, yeah. that you're, it's not like you've said, please, somebody hurt me, but ultimately you've chosen to learn something and mm -hmm. you will keep learning it until you learn it. So, you know, you, you're going to keep getting the lessons. So ch ch make a choice. That's what I said. I said, I, I've said it so many times, you know, the pattern repeats, be it a different face, different person, but ultimately the lesson is the same. And unfortunately the lesson gets harsher and harsher until you get it. Yeah. It Would you agree with that? Because I, like, I've had narcissists in the past yeah, yeah. Um, and I had quite an abusive narcissistic relationship in 2019. Um, and I've also met other narcissists since. Mm. Um, and it's uh, either one is physical or one is emotional. But mm. um, I guess it's my unhealed trauma that is constantly bringing those people yeah. into my life. And, you know, I was with somebody that triggered the hell out of me. Um, and it led me to you thank god okay however um other people are just like no i don't want to be with that person or i'm going to go and do this i'm going to run away i'm going to hide um and i just want to pick back on something you said which was really valid okay so many people think it's going to be so hard so what can me and you say today to say to people now is your time to deal with your unhealed trauma the thing that keeps coming up for me at the moment is time. Everyone is, oh my God, there's so much stuff. I need, an, um, one of my clients said to me the other day, I need a year to heal. I'm like, Maybe you, you could do it in a minute if you want. It doesn't take time. It takes, it takes a process. And that isn't a time thing. This isn't going to take a long time. It's, um, and we all have a lot of stuff. So I think it's like, yes, you might have a lot of stuff, but you don't always have to do it all at once either. You, know, you pick one thing and you do that and then you pick something else and you do that. And it's a cumulative effect, but it doesn't have to take time. It doesn't have to take four years to heal. And, and that's kind of like, that's the myth though, just to jump in there, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> the myth is, you know, your counselling will take a year. Well, who's got a year? And also the waiting list is about 18 months, I believe. I spoke mm -hmm. to someone um, up in Liverpool recently and she was like, I've been told the waiting list is 18 months. So I've come to you because I want to do it now. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. OK, if you feel that now is your time, then, you know, maybe I'm not saying counselling doesn't work because it's been brilliant. OK, all right. However, maybe there are alternative ways of healing yourself, because ultimately one of the things that I've always believed, as I'm sure you do. OK, I am my greatest student as I am my greatest teacher. But mm -hmm. the gift that I give myself is I listen to me. Mm -hmm. OK, and I'm sure there are many, many people going, I know what I need to do, but I'm going to run from it and not do it. 
And would you agree with me that the more that you run from it, the worse the, the illnesses can become, the symptoms? Yeah, or do, you... And do, do you know, it's like, you know, um, I was with my kids watching um, uh, watching a programme, which is like Bear Grylls, you know, versus the wild or VS or whatever <laughs> you want to call it anyway. And there's this one moment where you get to choose. Does he fight? Does he stand there and stand his ground against the wolf or does he run away? Now, we all know when there's a big fuck off animal that can run faster than you, you don't run because you're going to lose. What you do is you assert your authority, say, fucking bring it on. Sorry. Bring it on, you say to the wolf or the bear. And you damn well eyeball it and you go, you're not messing. And that's how you take your life on. Mm -hmm. You can run away from it and it gets scarier. And actually that big bad wolf will get scary and it will maul the fuck out. So I do swear it'll maul the bejesus out of you. So you need to. Um... I love you. I love you because you just give it. But you're, but you're raw and that's why I love you. And that's why people love me because I'm so honest and I say it as it is and I don't mess about. Mm. As I've said to people, if you want a crystal ball from a medium, leave Carl Kafferke alone. Yeah. Okay. Literally. Okay. But you're right there because actually, do you know what? And I've got to be honest, some of my clients, the inner child gets worse and worse and worse the older you get. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's because, it's, because it's further away. It's also, yeah. you had more chance to solidify the belief of that child. That's why working with kids is great because they haven't had that long to be, they haven't had that long sitting with that inner trauma. Yeah. So you go back and deal with it. It takes a minute. Oh, I, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm done now, move on. But when you've sat with it for 60 years, you think you can still heal it, but yeah, it does. And also that child has been sat there for 60 years getting rid yeah. of getting stroppy. Yeah, and so. it, it gets worse and worse. I have one of my clients, <laughs> and I've said this on other inner child videos, okay, who was literally, um, she turned around and she goes, you can't make me. Yeah. <laughs> she was in her 60s and I was like, sorry, did you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> I can't make you I said do you not think that's a very childish statement and she went yeah well you can't can you and I said have you I said have you stopped and have you taken a look at yourself and have you heard what you're saying I said you're talking to me like a child and I've got to be very honest you know um I, I'll be careful I'll speak about my family okay however um, there are people in my family who are very childish. OK, tell me what to do. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, I'll be OK. And how many of you? Oh, my God. How many of you out there watching this go? I'll be OK because I'm always OK, but I'll be OK. And God, I hope that doesn't happen. And I've got to say, with unhealed trauma, that does also bring along the worrying, does it not? OK, mm. because I have met so many people who worry and people book me, Lucy, left, right and centre for readings on their health. OK, I did a full in-depth reading for somebody who said, I'm scared I'm going to die. And that was last week. OK, yeah, yeah. and literally she said to me, I'm scared I'm going to catch the what's going on in the world. OK, um, and what can I do to help her? So I said to her basically around inner talking, your inner chat and whatever, but that she had some unhealed trauma that she needed to do. OK, whether or not my reading helped, because all I got back was thank you and two kisses. But I imagine it's really hard to hear. Like I say, a lot of people can't hear what they need to hear. And also there's a lot of people out there, make you believe a lot of maybe healers out there who. Who tell people what they want to hear. Um, and that actually just touching on that that is so true for um someone that I came across they told me everything that I wanted to hear um but actually it didn't help me if I'm honest it won't it won't I had a conversation with someone this morning and I didn't know I'm, I'm not one to give parental advice because do you know what uh <laughs> I've got my children and they would shit all over that um, so when I've been told to write a parenting book I'm like oh my goodness no and not I'll wait till they're 25 and they've left home and then yeah I'll and then you book. can write your book then yeah. I'll write a book on parenting um but today I was like oh no you you know really you, you is that what you think you know I, I and they said oh my goodness thank you for having the balls to tell me how it was thank mm -hmm. you because actually they were in the boat mode to hear it. I, I heard something, I couldn't not say it because it was like, ah, you've got to say this yeah. to this person. So I said it thinking, oh, cringe, cringe, cringe. Didn't want to say it. And they said, oh my God, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being, thank you for actually having the guts to say that because no one else would. 
yeah really help them see it from the oh my goodness my kids are struggling I need to yep. do something about that I was like oh my god I'm really sorry and then I know I needed to hear that thank you and I can, I can take that from you because yep. you're not judging me you're you're helping yeah and I think and you know and so but we have to be at a certain point where we can take stuff like yeah and the thing is um it keeps coming back around and back around and i've got to be honest okay if i look at my own healing journey okay my periods of being well would get less and less okay so like for example i would see a therapist and i would be okay for like two years and then it would come back up again and how many of you you know um there's a great book i read on depression i can't remember exactly what it was okay but it's like the black dog okay you are always worrying that that depression is going to come back yeah. okay yeah. um and it's almost like it's the black dog in the room okay so for me um my times between episodes of me being sane um or me being under um you know the care of the mental health team became less and less and less until it got to the point where I tried to take my life um and it was like okay either you end up sectioned okay for a long period of time or actually here's an option this is what you need to do yeah exactly. and it's at that point when they said to me oh but then you're gonna have to wait nine months that I went do you know what I haven't got nine months I'm gonna do it now yeah and that's when I looked at what can I do to start healing myself but I think, I mean, this is a, probably a whole nother conversation as well, but this is the problem with our current um, system of healthcare is that it's assumed we'll just get everything we need. And so we give over our, we give over our, well, they'll know what to do. I'll let them decide what my therapy needs to be. And actually what we really need to be doing is because my, the way I treat people and the way you help people and the way everyone you know, is very different and it's not going to suit everybody, but to give somebody a counsel or to give somebody what you know they think that that's going to fix it and actually you need to find your own way I yep. truly believe that I mean I I was under the mental health team but I also had a crystal healer at the time who helped me oh wow okay yeah I, I mean I had a twisted womb and that's why I wasn't getting periods it wasn't to do with me being underweight it was I was very anorexic and but she said no your, your womb so she was there with a fag on <laughs> I'm lying I on a lying on a lying on a spare room bed my mum took me to this crazy woman in Muravort I mean she was Muravort in Inverness she's I don't put it alive now, but she so had a fag on, just about four foot two. <laughs> Close your eyes, hang on, I'm going to give you some anaesthetic. And I, I went on to a bit of a weird kind of, a, a, a bit numb. She always, oh yeah, hang on a sec. So she laid these crystals all around me. And I was, I was, I was a little bit out of it and my whole body surged up and I had my first period at the age of 18. Because, wow. yeah because yeah, my womb had twisted and she felt that she, yeah, she was with a fag on having a crystal over she literally had a crystal over my over my tummy and my whole body kind of lurched <laughs> my, mom, my mom was freaking traumatized watching like what are you doing to her you know she's like it's all right be fine give her a sec <laughs> there she was and uh complete and I never saw her again but in that moment I needed her and then I've seen yeah. somebody else and then actually what was amazing was I had a terrible past life regression. Okay. Somebody left me and I had six months and it'd be, so this woman, it was an absolute gift, but, <laughs> but for six months I was in the pits, like not being able to disassociate. Yep. But what it did was showed me the importance of doing it right. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, I can I can totally take that because some people I've worked with um, and I'm going to give this very honestly. OK, there are some people out there who may want to heal you, but they're also re I don't know what the word is here. OK, but it's like they're not dealing with themselves. So they're putting their stuff onto you and they're trying to heal you, but they're keeping you attached to said trauma. Yeah. OK. Um, and I've worked with people in the past and I've like. I know what I'm trying to say, but it's like, it's almost like you're living, you're reliving your wounds through me continuously mm -hmm. and you're not actually helping me, uh, but you think you are. Um, so what I'm going to say in the biggest gift that I ever was given in my life was my intuition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and intuitively anyone watching this, if this video is sorry, if it's triggering anybody. Okay. Um, however, intuitively, if the words that we've mentioned today, any of them pop out to you, OK, and you're like in a child um, or you're like past life aggression um, or unhealed trauma or any of the words that we have said today. If they have jumped out to you, then intuitively that is the path. Would you agree that someone needs to kind of start looking at and doing some work yeah. around? 
Absolutely. And and reach out for the people who would work with you. So, I mean, people reach out to me and we're not right together. So I mm-hmm. said, you know what, this probably, I'm not the worst. Or they say, well, I, want, I like what you do, but I'm not sure this is, you yeah. know. And so, and I don't feel, because then we are the ego, we'll talk about that another time. But, um, but then I don't take that as a person. I think, oh my God, that person's ready. How yeah. can I best serve that person? And that's not always to work with them. And sometimes it is, Sometimes I've actually messaged people and said, I need to work with you. You've done mm-hmm. that too. As I actually, I mean, I need to do that with you because yeah. you, I feel, I know I can help you. Are you ready? Yeah. And I've done that before. And that's like, that's not me like being all salesy, but you think, oh my gosh, no, they, they, they've got to do this now. Yeah. And I, I feel like I've got to push them into it. And sometimes you say, yeah. do you know what? There's somebody better. And yeah. yeah. No. And I, I've, to be fair, I've done that. And I mean, that's one of the things that I've um, I've already come and spoken to you around is, you know, I'm going to be um, offering coaching there in terms of mediumship. But I do believe to be the very best medium that you need to be. You need to also heal your stuff. And uh, yeah. I've asked you to come on board um, and do a session around stories and beliefs, yeah. which I know will actually smash and really help a lot of would be um, uh, mediums out there. But yeah. um, like yourself, um, I I know a portfolio of people, so to speak, who if someone comes to me and says, um, I don't know, I've got stories and beliefs, I send them your way. OK, yeah. um, if I'm if someone's like, oh, you know, can you do cards or whatever? I know a card reader. Mm-hmm. Um, I know someone who can do Reiki and all those kind of things. And then it's about I don't think there's a one stop shop is what I'm trying to say. OK, there is not one solution. And I just want to know you'll get your thoughts on this. OK, I don't think there's one solution for unhealed trauma. Um, And I think it's like what you said earlier, how would someone start their journey then if they feel that this video and the words now really hit home? I would say um, you'd either speak to one of us, like if if this video is effective, I would then say get in touch with one of us and then talk to either one of us and say, what do you reckon? Because if if this is spoken to, to, to you and whoever's watching, um yeah I mean you do you work one way and I work quite a different way um yeah so I I work with people's stories and their stories and it's not uh, with generally the EFT and story getting and I do a lot of EFT and stuff like that and tapping and understanding where your shit comes from and going back there Mm -hmm. and you were and you and how would you say you best work what do you do um to me to be honest probably I I tend to do a session a kind of like a a fact-finding session okay and uh I get different things like um you know what your inner chat is your inner talk um if I feel the inner child is relevant I can always recommend um doing inner child healing uh but certainly if something comes up and I don't feel qualified for that um and I think that's something all healers need to take on board okay Mm -hmm. you can't help everybody with everything okay so I've done and and you've got quite a few clients off of me haven't you where I've done inner child work so I've sorted out the little kid and then they come to you to smash stories and beliefs Mm. yeah because Mm. for me that was what I did working my way but I'm not saying the way I did it is right and all I do is I show people that's all I do and yeah. but it's up to is it, it, each individual is up to their own journey. But yeah. please, I don't believe there's one person that can actually heal you because what I'm going to say, the only person who can heal you is you. Absolutely, yeah. But I how many people play the rescue fixer or the, like people? Do people yeah. come to you and expect them to save you to save them, Lucy? I, I just want to delve into that. Say, well, that's what you're going to do for me. Is, is I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to show you what to do. Mm-hmm. But then, for, correct me if I'm wrong, though, Cal, is a lot of people who go into healing go into it because they want to rescue. Yep. So they actually want to be the rescuer sometimes. And so yep. they that's their job. Whereas I feel that my role and my purpose in this life, in my life, is to, to show people how powerful they are. Yep. as in themselves so I don't hope that someone stays with me forever and always needs me I want to say do you know what you've got it all but it's unlocking all that isn't it it's knowing how to do that so um that's one of the things that I because I, I made a video on your page didn't I uh the, uh, the inside <laughs> job um and I uh, I literally made a video and I just said the greatest thing that I love about you is I don't need you but I want you 
and that's where we have a really beautiful very deep friendship because yeah. I don't need you in my life but I, I choose to to have you as a friend yeah. and yeah you know someone that really really helps and stuff you know and whatever but um I just there are and and I actually know somebody um <clears throat> and I'm sure this person might one day share their story I don't know okay um but they used to counsel people okay because they wanted to fix people rather than fixing themselves Mm. and you will yeah. come across healers like that that yeah. they want to give you all the tools and you'll see it time and time again I'm sure you've seen it Lucy okay all right um I think you should do this this and this it's procrastination isn't it you know okay they don't do it themselves but they give you all the tools how many times do you guys um you know watching this video today have gone well I do that or, or I do that and we're always the first one to want to help anybody but ultimately you're here for you you're here to heal yourself yeah, and to definitely. set yourself free. And everyone's like, yeah, but I don't have time for me. Okay, brilliant. What would be your way of smashing just that quick belief that I don't have that time for me? Because I hear that day in, day out. I yeah. would, Like we said earlier, I will, after Christmas, I will in the future. Yeah. What's one thing someone do you think could get from that? the time thing is well you know you're being you you know you're 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 not creating the time you can create as much time as you want time time is time is absolutely an illusion anyway so if we're going to go down that route but um people say I don't have time. <laughs> that's yeah. another chat Lucy. yeah if people, if people say i don't have time yeah i saw there's this quote that's gone around loads you know you either create time for your wellness or you'll have your your or you'll you'll have to create time for your illness so you decide that's massive yeah i should keep seeing that quote everywhere i don't know who said it probably Rumi or somebody but um i don't, I don't want to i don't want to put that on Rumi. but um yeah so i was like you know actually yeah so you choose because at some point you're gonna have to be you're gonna get sick mentally yeah. or you're gonna get so exhausted that everything takes a long time so when I lent into actually how I operate as a human, I'm a lot more effective when I do it like this. I'm not effective. You know, how long, you know, sometimes you put something off and you're tired, but you do, oh, I'll type it out and you're doing it in a miserable way. It takes you frigging, eight, God, I'm really trying. It takes you frigging ages to do it. Whereas if you just give yourself an hour off, read a book, do something for yourself, you could smash that in five minutes. So, you know, if you're saying I don't have time for that, well, what do you, what are you making time for then? Because if you don't have time to make yourself happy, then what the hell is the point in any of it anyway? That is so powerful. And I bet that might have just triggered a few people. However. Hope so. Well, <laughs> however, um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess, I guess um, <clears throat> kind of like for me, um, you know, I can only ever speak, you know, when you think about um, just, I don't want to touch me about on triggers there, but like I said, it's such a gift to healing, but <clears throat> I hear all the time from people. I don't have that time. I don't have that time. And it's like the time is now make time for you. Um, I feel that's just what comes through absolutely hugely. I'm just hearing that for my guides, you know, um, just make time for you. And, and, and for all of you going, yeah, you know, but I don't want to ruin Christmas. Okay could you have an even better Christmas if you started your healing journey today? Mm. And on that, by the way, you're running a Christmas thing, aren't you? Oh, I am. I'm doing like, yeah, I'm doing Christmas thing on uh, Thursday at 10. Have you fixed the link now? No. I love you. I'll fix the link. <laughs> <laughs> fix oh, the is there anything else that you want to kind of touch on around uh, unhealed trauma? Um, I just think, yeah, when you said the time is now, it really, really is because it's not going to get better doing nothing about it. No. Um, and then you end up, and personally, I know people in wheelchairs, um, and that's because they just, and I know one guy who is such a gifted medium, um, and he's been in bed for three years. Right. And I recently met another medium who's been housebound for two and a half years. Um, and that's because of all her unhealed trauma. And she just doesn't feel like she's worth it. And she just said to me, I said, so does the word inner child mean anything to you? And she went, yeah, and I'll get round to that at some point. The, the problem is, I and mean, hopefully there's a few healers here watching, because I was having a chat because um, I wouldn't say I'm an empath, right? Um, I just wouldn't. Um, I think everyone assumes that you are if you are 
if you help people but I suppose I probably am I'm very empathetic but I don't take people's stuff on yeah so the difference with a lot of people and if there's healers out there who are exhausted after every session can I tell you that's absolutely not how it should feel you should yep. feel I, I have to know how you feel Kel but after each session I do I feel exhilarated yep. because I'm also getting the same healing they're getting because it's not about me I'm literally just I'm not taking everyone's stuff on I am I'm just there as a as a vessel really oh my um, god that is so can I just copy that that is so relevant um <clears throat> I spoke to a healer um last week and she said she was so exhausted but that's because she's empathic and that's because that's what she's come here to do and I said to her well maybe darling just maybe you've got some healing to do because you shouldn't be taking that on. Now, yeah. every session that I do for everybody, be it mediumship, be it coaching, be it inner child, whatever, I always am buzzing off the walls. Quite often I'll voice message you and go, Lucy, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I just did this, 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 and this, and this. And you're like, Kelbo, I love you, I love you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. But to any healers out there, you should yeah. be feeling like, oh my God, you've just taught someone a gift. You've given someone a tool. And yeah. for any healers watching this, okay, for me honestly you shouldn't be attached to me I'm not here to save you you're here to save you beautiful soul watching this mm -hmm. you nobody can save you and if you always want to rescue and fix everybody well how about fixing you first yeah. healers included I think that's well, a healers, massive healers more powerful so. message yeah healers more so I saw a little girl yesterday um and her mum was saying oh she's really empathetic and I'm like Right, we need to get, she looks drained because she was talking and she looked like, oh, she's literally like, she could she could tell she could see everything going on. Like she could see um, all the um, all the energies going around. I said, you need to protect her. She needs to learn how to protect herself because she's just there like taking it all on, like literally being attacked and seeing it all and not know what to do with it. And I see kids, you see kids a lot, especially now because the energy and the vibration is so huge and big and wow, they're getting, exhausted yeah. and it's you've got to learn to, to not become it and not to let it feed off of you um and people will come to you oh I feel better after spoken to you and you're like oh god you know you're like dying people shouldn't be feed I get clients say how I feel so good after I've been with you I hope I'm not draining you I'm like no no you're doing that to you it hasn't come from me it's come yeah. because you've healed something because you've yeah. let go of something and so you're not doing anyone a service by being exhausted after being with them because no, they're just feeding not. off of you. They're not healing themselves. They're just taking your energy. Yep. No, I 100% would agree <clears> with that. Okay. And one person said to me a little while ago, she goes, um, what was it? She said to me, she said, um, thank you so much for everything you've ever done. She goes, ever since I've met you, my life has changed and I can never thank you enough. And I went, you don't need to thank me. You need to give yourself a pat on the back and you need to thank yourself and say, I'm so grateful that I actually did my journey because I ain't done nothing. All right. I've shown you how to either connect with your inner child or I've given you a tool that I have used to help in my healing journey um, to help you go and heal yourself in your yeah. healing journey. And I think mm -hmm. that's massive. And I'm sure we've probably touched a nerve there with a few healers. Um, I hope so, because, because people assume that they have to also, just going on that, say also there's a real belief when you are a healer that it has to be, it's very much a, oh, that's my duty. I'm going to live in poverty and be miserable. Yeah. And, oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Totally relatable. Um, like someone said to me, oh, I can't charge for my gift. Time. It's got a value. Money is an energetic uh, yeah. thing. Your gift is a your gift, and why should you not live in the world in, in the in the world you want to live in? Mm -hmm. You know, but you, if you yeah, it's not just time. It's the, it's the fact that you have got a gift, and um, yeah, whatever you want to exchange for that. But money is important, and money has been given a bit of a bad rap. To be fair, people hate money, and yeah. And I know you've just done a started a course, haven't you? Another life by design or around money. Um, and I know you're helping 15 incredible people around their journey with money. Um, helping. That's all the people. <laughs> and then you've got another one, haven't you? You're doing another one. Uh, yeah. When's your next uh, Life by Design? If people that's... are interested in really smashing stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm going to plug you a little bit there, Lucy. Yeah. Um, when's your next bit. one? 
next one um well I'm doing a little workshop on uh, on uh, life on purpose so finding a purpose in life um wow. doing that. yeah I've got a real calling I've been I've been I had a calling to do this for about a year but I didn't have the structure which I didn't know how to do it now I know how to do it so I'm doing it so it's going to be life on purpose but it's going to be the um yeah life by design but find your purpose um, and that when does that when does that start if people well, are interested the free, the free workshop is going to be um next thursday at eight so is thursday, that this is, thursday or not this thursday the following thursday no, 28th isn't it 28th 28th the week on thursday 28th of october uh yeah oh i didn't read the date when i tick not going sorry <laughs> are you going now i'm going now yeah <laughs> okay I see kelvin uh, yeah, so um, it should be good. I mean, the workshops are really good. It's a masterclass or whatever. I always put a workshop or a masterclass. But yeah, and then I'm going to be doing, um, after that, if you want a bit more, but you're not sure you want to do six weeks of it, I'm going to do a three-day event after that. So That's incredible. Well, I've got to say, I think, um, I think we've helped a huge amount of people. And I think if you've managed to get all the way to the end, hopefully um, you've taken something out of, uh, of, our, of our time and our chat today. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to kind of like say um, final last bits? You know, we're kind of up to 50 minutes, I think, on the video. Oh, okay. so. One last thing is I've suggested that Kel do um, coffee with Kel. So if you'd like to do coffee with Kel and have a chat with Kel, because you've got some, <laughs> it's really fun. Um, and she, but she doesn't make you coffee. No, because it's via Zoom. But I could always, I, I don't know, I could deliver room. I, I don't know how that works. I really wouldn't over over promise and to deliver. I would just say, get yourself a coffee and have a chat with Cal. Uh, and I was, and one thing I would say, um, you know, if you're drawn to either of us, um, all the information is at the links at the top of this video. Um, and I guess from me, um, I suppose my final words would be, your time is now. There is no more important person in your life than you. You, the soul watching this, and you came down here for you and mm. only you. And it's your soul evolution, either you're prolonging mm. or that you're going to sort out. Because if any of you are watching this and you are light workers, your time is now. But about that time thing, um, because, you know, I love a bit, a little bit of quantum. So um, the only time is now and the only place is here. So I love that. And, and for those of you in the quantum, you'll understand what we mean by that. OK, um, quantum is something completely different. And that's another chat we could have another day, I'm sure. But um, but Lucy, I'd love to say thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you. I love it. I coffee and I, I've had nice. like, you know, I've had nearly an hour of Lucy. So I am, even though I was buzzing before, I am buzzing yeah. now. But, but thank you, beautiful soul, for crossing yeah. ultimately my path. Um, and for also um, the people on my page to actually see you um and also for the people on your page to also see me yeah, and know who amazing. I am. so yeah. you know um thank you to all of you that have watched it's been yeah. amazing it's been beautiful and um we hope to uh uh catch uh catch you all in the future all right see you later Bye. Bye. Bye.